I was obviously really nervous um, going into the day thinking, crikey, I'm, I'm pretty close to what I need to achieve. But as I got closer and closer, I was really good. I was really focused on, on what I was trying to do. My brain was working brilliantly and, and concentrating. Um, and I felt strong. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't thinking too much about what was going to happen or, or what I was about to achieve really. But, you know, once you have time to reflect on it and think back on it, it to think of all the people that have played here in the past and all the, the great names that have graced the, the club and the ground, that, you know, to think, you know, you, I've got the most hundreds is, is a pretty special feat. You're top of that pile. Mm. That's a bit special. Yeah, it is. We have a few other accolades yet to go, but um, we're still obviously searching for that championship trophy. That's going to be the most important thing for me. Aaron. Marcus Triscothic, 50 centuries for Somerset. Does that come as any surprise to you? Not at all. As a young 15 year old, he was playing three matches on a Saturday, or he certainly did on one occasion, and Peter Robinson was there. And Peter said to me, we got this young lad, you know, we've got to really look at him. And the first time I saw him, we signed him virtually. Oozes cricket. You leave a bat around here, pick it up. He, he's, he just loves the game. You pick bats up, feel them. If there's anything wrong with a handle, it'd be changing it and messing around. I remember his his test debut at Old Trafford against Ambrose and Walsh, and how well he left the ball, you know, outside off and. Um, and he just looked right at home in, in, in the Test Match arena, so... Uh... His passion for the county is, is inspirational and like, to play under him was quite surreal but it was a privilege for me because he was my childhood hero growing up. Probably my adulthood hero as well, um, but uh, no, he's been awesome and uh, can't thank him enough really. Obviously when I came into the team he was captain so... Um, he's helped me a lot and as he's helped all the younger guys so he's awesome and he'll continue to be awesome uh, and he's he's a leader so he'll lead by example by scoring all the runs he'll score so um, yeah he's been incredible but you know I think that the areas that he had to work on on his game was his his playing of spin and playing of the little mediums um, you know and uh, it's a very common it's very common with, with dominant right-handers, as I say, bat left, that they drive the ball beautifully, but like David Gowers, you know, it's elegant, they drive so well, and then, oh, out caught in the gully, because they've just, they've just gone up one that they shouldn't have. So getting Marcus to appreciate, you know, making sure he played the ball right under his eyes and hit it into the ground, so that he wouldn't occasionally just, you know, um, chip one up to gully or chip one up into the covers. But, uh, yeah, he had, always had fantastic ability, and, um, you know, so so strong off his pads, bat the bat lovely and straight, and uh, you know against real quicks he always had time. He always had time, so uh, you know it's no surprise to me that he's he he had a wonderful Test career and that he's got fifty hundreds for Somerset in first class cricket. Great achievement. Just a terrific lad, and I mean he's the same now as he was. Brilliant. Exactly. exactly. Obviously his early run wasn't too good, was it? Because I think uh, after his first season he. Had really done any big scores early and you had a chat with him early on in the second well, season? It, it, it happens. The game, you know, it, it's, we all know it's all about the end column and he aspired to fill up that end column and that's always in him. It is now. Why is he still playing now? Because he wants to do it and you, you can have a talented young player that hasn't quite got that thing going for him and they're going to make it and uh, great example he's been here. Marcus always had the talent. It was getting him to uh, to believe that in, a, in himself. I, you know, I remember a conversation with him when he, he was talking about Graham Hick and Mike Gatting and you know, how good they were as players. And I, you know, I said, Marcus, that's how people that's how people see you. And he had this look of surprise on his on his face.
and I mean, you added the all-rounder string to his bow, didn't you? Because predominantly it was a batsman when he came, when you came here, but you developed his bowling. Yeah, he could bowl. You know, he could swing the ball a bit, and he had a quite nice slow ball out the back of the hand. Um, part of it was actually to, to, to get him just doing more, you know, more physical work. Um, I think when I, when I came, I didn't, I didn't feel that uh, he was the best player, or he had had the experience of playing a lot of spin. Because if you open the batting, you're always up against, you know, the quicks, and you know, you have to bat for a long time until a spinner comes on. And Peter Bowler and I felt that in the in one day cricket. If we batted Marcus in the middle order and he had to go straight in, starting innings against spin and against perhaps little mediums, that would actually be better help his game so that he then went back to open. Um, you know, if he saw the new ball through and then spinners came on, he, he'd be able to dominate them. So, 50 centuries for Somerset. Mm. Did you ever think you'd, uh, when you started out, did you ever think that would happen? <laughs> I don't know. You don't ever think that you're going to sort of break records and then achieve certain things in the game, but. Uh... It was very nice. It's obviously, it was hanging around for a while, obviously from the back of the end of last season and thinking a bit, a bit about it this, this summer. But um, very nice to, to get past it. It was just uh, a bit of relief, if anything else, just to, you know, to finally get there. And when you started back in 93, 17-year-old, mm. West, West Indies? No, it was a big game, wasn't it? The Lancashire. Big... Yeah, that's right. When Lancashire. Caddy Ken, Ken, Ken got 9 for 30. 9 32. Um, I got one and three in the game against Wazi Makram and uh, Phil De Freitas and didn't bat for very long as you can imagine. But um, a great experience, it was a two day, four day game at the time. Uh, I remember then I went, and play, went away and played club cricket on the Saturday, um, got injured and got a right telling off when I came back on the Sunday. So um, not an ideal sort of week really if you like, but um, nonetheless it's all nice to play. You didn't find it easy to begin with, did you? I mean your first season won a roaring success, then mm. second season um, you were sort of given a chance, you had a three match sort of opportunity, Bob Cotton gave you mm. and didn't Tony Middleton did you a favour, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, he legs. dropped me at short leg, so it's, you know, you, you need little moments like that, don't you? Just that little bit of luck, but you know, it never started that great, then I had a good season and then it was a bit sort of intermittent after that really for a good number of years, but lovely to get going, as you can imagine, sort of a youngster sort of playing the game, you just grow up and just enjoy doing what you do and, and, it's, and it's very exciting and when you get playing well and you start succeeding, um, you know, you set your, your, your sights and your goals on, on bigger and, and better things, but um, it was lo lovely nonetheless. You got your first ton at Bath, which probably mm. is your home ground, I'm guessing, from playing at Cainshaw. Mm. Oh, pretty much so, yeah. I think um, it was just nice, wasn't it? I had a lot of friends and family there who were watching over the course of the week, and you know, Bath was a great sort of spectacle for us, and especially for myself going back home, I could stay with my parents for the week um, and then obviously then play the game, and it was always quite nice, but obviously as time moved on, that, the pitch and the ground didn't really sort of match up to what we needed, so we had to move away. But to get my first hundred there was, was a pretty special thing against Surrey, so it was uh, pretty nice. And uh, you had a period of playing in the seconds, so you got a big score against Warwickshire mm. in the seconds, you 300. 322, yeah. I mean, that, that was an amazing game, wasn't mm. it? Uh, it was a very good game, and I think I remember looking back on it, I've got the scorecard at home because I, I think I got 46 or 45 in the first innings. Um, and I also bowled about 45 overs in the game, but uh, I'm not sure I could manage that nowadays but um, to then go and get 322 and I was last man run out. I remember Andy Cotton had broken his wrist and, and couldn't bat so we had to try and um, farm the strike as much as I could but uh, couldn't quite get us home. I'm guessing one of the biggest tons that, that's been an influence on your whole career has been that ton against Glamorgan mm -hmm. here and the Duncan Fletcher watched. Yeah that was probably the time that really sort of changed it really and sort of sparked it into to becoming something else. I was sort of on and off playing for England, uh, playing for Somerset and and doing okay at times, but never really sort of getting a real good understanding about what I was trying to do. And, and that summer, I'd, I'd been to Australia and sort of worked with a few different people and got a better understanding of what my game was. But nonetheless, you need a little bit of luck just to get you going. And um, that innings really sort of sparked it off because then I got picked for an A tour at the end of the summer. And then the following summer after that, I came back and played for England.